Team Liquid just got dominated on Fracture by this spooky dog. Yeah, these Valorant All-Stars were scared off by Team Secret's game plan. Their display of calculated aggression, explosive traps, and unpredictable mind games were the perfect demonstration of how defense on Fracture should be played. And Team Liquid just couldn't hang, so you are going to learn the secrets to this map right now. With them, you too can frighten anyone on Fracture and be their worst nightmare. Ugh. No, make it stop. Oh, oh, I just had a bad dream. I was using my PC and uh, I couldn't customize my browser. Oh, phew. Thank goodness I have Opera GX, the sponsor of this video. Opera GX is a free web browser that allows you to have full customizability over your search engine. By going to their mods menu on their sidebar and scrolling down to their store, you immediately have a ton of options to choose from. Each mod gives you custom keyboard sounds, background music, themes, and so much more. Plus, you can mix and match them. I like the Valorant theme from the Radiant Agents pack, love the sound of rain when I work, and I love these keyboard sounds. With these boxes, your browser is now your canvas. Why would you ever use a boring old browser when Opera GX exists, especially when it takes up less power than other leading browsers? With their GX control feature, you can set how much power your browser uses. Here I have my typical tabs open that I would when I'm working on my videos, and look at the difference. It speaks for itself. And while my tabs are open, why not come take a sneak peek of my next video? Oh, my eye! Yeah, with Opera GX, you can force dark mode on any website you visit so you don't get flashed like I did. And if you use my tracking link in the description, you'll be able to see my 12 latest uploaded videos. So hurry up and join the millions of gamers optimizing their setup with the Opera GX browser. Link in the description. Team Liquid are down a map and are already losing 2-0 after shanking the pistol round and the eco. If they lose this buy round, they're going to be forced onto another eco and dig themselves into a deep hole while already down 1-0. The outcome of this round could determine whether or not Team Liquid gets sent home. They're set up in a 2-3 default. Raze and Breach are starting towards A main, and their teammates are over near B main. Cypher has a spy cam posted on the wall, and KO is in a perfect position to flash for him if anyone were to aggress main. With Breach one point off his rolling thunder, they plan on executing Sight with his ultimate. Liquid also knows that Team Secret is on an eco, and they all want to stay on the south side of the map. Doing so would keep all the guns in one place and help prevent them from getting ecoed. If they split up on opposite sides of the map, you run the risk of the defense isolating your teammates and snowballing with their weapons. Secret have three players near A. Their plan is to contest this area of the map with Fade Seas, Breach's Fault Line, and Raze's Pain Shells. On B, they have Cypher and Spawn and Brimstone on site. Their plan is to play off of Cypher's trap wires and for Brimstone to anchor down with his molly and sky smokes. And no, Cypher isn't baiting Brimstone, they're just playing against the KO, and if Cypher gets tagged, they're screwed. The round starts, and the defense uses a fade prowler to take contact in A main. This spooky ghost dog is the trigger for what would be an A main trap, but since it tags somebody deep in spawn, the trap doesn't go off. Liquid responds by ripping their own fault line and recalling an Astro Star. This creates so much pressure that Team Secret is forced to cancel their utility with a fault line of their own. Team Secret send a rumor down the hall, and it gets broken from the same place the prowler got shot from. They figure to give it a few seconds, hope Liquid are walking up, and they launch their paint shell seize combo, but it gets nothing. Now Liquid's three other players have snuck their way under sewer and are now in perfect positions to split B through arcade. Redguard calls his team back, Breach picks up an orb, and the execute starts. Like, right, this should be the best attempt that they've had yet. They absolutely have better weaponry, so this should be clean for oh, Liquid. There it is. And there it is. That's what they've been building towards. This should be the ghost signal. Yampi holds it at the door, though. Great counter utility to offset the timing. Yeah. And it's dubstep to find safe. That's safe. Gonna be taken down. That's it's a disaster for Team Liquid. Their KO ran into one of Cypher's wires. They're stalled by Brim's Molly. And Brim is still on site, hiding in a smoke and protected by another trip. This round isn't looking good. And their only saving grace is that they have the better weaponry. They decide to wait up the Brim smokes, clear Clear this guy out and scale up together. Because of Nats' positioning in tower, this brimstone had no chance with this pistol. But Raze took advantage of how long her team stalled Liquid for and has a really good flank on Astra. This duel is massive. The flank pressure does come in. That's Jeremy oh, takes what? down one. Hold on. <laughs> There's no way. Has precise oh play. man, I, I I love this game. Trades go down. It's a two versus two, and Nats gets one. Repositions, crossfires with his teammate on site, gets his fourth kill, and closes out the round. Now this wasn't a great round for Team Liquid, but they pulled away with the win. 
this next round, both teams are in the same setup. Team Secret are fighting for A main and are anchoring down B site. Team Liquid also have two near A and three more B. The buy barrier drops and Yampy goes flying. They know that Team Secret is contesting A main from this spot and they want to pounce. Redgar rips his fault line, but Envy is ready. He whips his stun across A main and catches Yampy right about as he reaches his teammates. Fade's prowler that they use to trigger their trap also locks onto Yampy and Team Liquid's entry gets shot right out of thin air. Jeremy thinks that there's more coming, so he pops the showstopper and scares Team Liquid away. Once it expires, Ray sits on his throne, jiggle peeking A main with his paint shells in hand, waiting to see if Liquid want more. In response to all this aggression, Safe snaps Cypher's trap wire on B. With the pressure made, they call Jeremy's bluff and come back to A main. There's no way Ray's has pushed up this far, right? Surely he's falling back. I mean, they're up numbers. Wrong. Despite them breaking Cypher's wire, the rotates aren't coming in. Ray spots the attackers coming back to recite, Fade throws her haunt to make sure she isn't getting pinched from Dish, and the trap moves back into their positions. One. Jeremy has support here as well. Jesse bashes by his side. So timing is everything now. First player's crossed. Low ahead. Redgar. Oh my oh. word! Jeremy sends it packing. Redgar denied. No support there either for the trade. Yeah, they have that seize nade coming. Nobody can try to push in to cover him. He ends up just getting taken down with a nasty headshot from the side of Jeremy. Jesse Bash gonna be able to find Team Liquid got put in a blender. Between Raises Paint Shells, Fade Seas, and Breaches Aftershock, they never stood a chance. Safe is then tasked with the impossible and is forced to try and save. After getting rocked in A main, Redgar tells his team to start towards Bridge and work the north side of the map. They're in a 2 2 1 setup with Astra playing info towards the south, but Team Secret are ready for this. They're set up to fight for Dish right after showing heavy A main pressure in back to back rounds. They have Liquid on a string. Their anchors are still on B, but they have Breach lining up his fault line and Ray's and Fade ready to attack anyone trying to take this part of the map. Just like in A main, they're using Fade's utility as a trigger. Her kit has been the focal point of their defense so far. Her haunt doesn't hit. But when Liquid breaks her prowler, they get hit like a truck. Quite nice. Oh dear, oh, oh dear, Red Girl. Yeah, Yampi tried to back away. He's being surrounded. They're hunting him down like a dog. Oh dear, the blast back will do nothing in this. Team Secret is playing Fracture perfectly. If you're not constantly fighting or setting up a trap on this map, you're allowing the offense to do whatever they want. The map is designed for the defense to get aggressive and proactive. And what we're watching is textbook. Team Secret now control the spike, and with two pistols and a rifle, this is simply too much for Liquid. Team Secret has two big ultimates online this round. They have Fade's Nightfall and Cypher's Neural Theft. Team Secret has one big ultimate online this round. They're playing a trap set up towards Dish and are giving up A main. Their anchors have been great on B, and if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Liquid are set up similarly to last round and are banking that Secret don't show the same hand twice. Two Dish, two Arcade, one South. What they don't know is that Team Secret is letting them have A. Their protocol is to play Retake when Fade has their ultimate online. They've conditioned Liquid that they're fighting for map control just about everywhere. Secret have fought for A main and Dish, so no matter where the offense goes, they'll waste utility while the defense saves theirs. And this makes their retake that much stronger. The round starts with Liquid sending the Roomba up Dish, and Secret sends one back in response. Fade and Race try and launch their Paint Shell Seize combo where the Roomba was broken, and they fall back to play the retake. This should be enough pressure to force Liquid to dump utility on the site like I mentioned previously. So far so good for Team Secret. Liquid have also taken Arcade with Cypher's Cages, his Spy Cam, and KO's Knife. For the first time this game, they have map control. They're free to do what they want and pull off a clean execute. Redguard calls for his team to shift over to B and 4-1 execute onto the site. They know Cypher is playing off site based from the previous rounds, so they knife spawn instead of opening up the site. Team Liquid dismantle Cypher setups, and they set up in their post plant positions and brace for impact. So wisely played, and now they have the Nightfall for the retake. Yeah, see how many actually catches. Potentially three, not sure if he got towards the tower in the end, but again, as it stands, good initial work. They should know where these players at least reside. Good start as well from Envy, finding Redgar, removing him from the side, but a 3v3. Spike now down, and that's back in tower. You know he's a specialist. After the retake, it's a three versus three. The spike is planted for remain, and Jesse has the read. Yes, they're running through the utility, but they still have to swing by. Liquid just wasn't ready for him to push up B main, and their spacing shows it. Nats is in a one versus three, but he can only do so much. Liquid take a much needed timeout. I miss Sliggy. This round, Team Secret show an entirely new setup. 
in that timeout, they notice that KO has his ultimate online in one point. Their protocol for this is that they swap the fade and Cypher. Cypher puts all of his trap wires on B and then goes to play A. If Liquid uses their ult on B, they won't expect Cypher's wires and get tangled up in them. On A, he has a fault line trap set up with his Breach and Raze. Once his spy camp takes contact, Breach is stunning and Raze is nading and Liquid is crying. Cypher has a one-way in A main for himself and Brim and Fade are playing retake on B and off the trips that I mentioned. Liquid in their timeout talked about how Secret's Breach has his Rolling Thunder and the last time they had a site wide ultimate, they played retake B. So they blast up B main as soon as the barrier drops. They run through the Brimali and want to plant before Team Secret can get ready to retake. And they don't let them retake. They take the fight to them. Liquid understand that if they play this round out by planting and trying to fend off the retake, they're going to get smoked by Breach's ultimate oh, and their better guy. weapons. Pushing spawn and taking these engagements was the perfect reaction. To be side secret, allowing that control to happen. A lot of investment here. Lovely just themselves into the site. Yep, just sprinting through it. Safe going to be taken down at 48 HP. Redgar as well, tagged up with the plant. It's going to be coming through and Jesse Bash has to pull away. Borkum gets the wall bank shot and that's the plants are taken down. Borkum finds his second and the spike is now stranded. And the three players are already pushing up to try and pressure towards CT. So the spike's not even on their side. They need to just brawl this out somehow. Chip damage maybe name of the game. They have the ult on safe. That's maybe what they are after here. But Borkum just free farming. This has got to feel good. A confidence booster for Borkum. Quiet until that point, but then... Now, with better weapons, Liquid may have won this round. But Team Secret were ready and read them like a book. Both teams start in a similar setup. Secret have their trips still up on B, with Fade playing off them in case Liquid invests their KO ult, but they're stacking A with the four other players. Liquid start with three players towards Bridge, and Cypher and Astra towards the south. Secret toss their haunt, and Sky smoke off B main. This gives off the impression that they're fighting for B main, but they're actually stacked on A. The mind games are on. Nats walks up A main, loses a 1v1, and Liquid are in a rough spot and can't get a read on Secret despite them having the same setup as last round. They see Breach's fault line in A main and assume that A is the heavier stack site and head back towards B. They rip Astra's Cosmic Divide, KO Zolt, and start the execute. And it's at this point in the round where we see Liquid realize what Team Secret are doing. They're playing retake again. With this read, Liquid don't want to get rocked by Breach's Rolling Thunder, so they get ready to push spawn again. What is the difference now? Fault line. To spawn. Swing it. Doesn't hit any. Jeremy gonna be taken down though. Yampy's actually pushing this. They're trying to get aggressive. Jesse Bash! But Jesse doesn't care! He just shuts it down! Team Secret are again ready, and Liquid's window for a comeback is closing quick. This round, Team Secret show us something entirely new. After having Cypher set up towards B round after round, they start them on A with Raze in a strong off angle on this box. Their plan this round is to have Cypher spy cam take contact on Dish, and Raze is going to launch her paint shells at the attackers as their execute starts. It's a trap! If attackers run on A main, Cypher has kill traps across the ground that will tangle up the offense alongside some cages for him to play around. On B, they have Breach, Fade, and Brimstone, and for the first time this game, they plan on fighting for arcade control. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to see a common trend here. It seems to me that every time that Liquid are in an eco round, Team Secret fights towards this top half of the map. But every time that Liquid is on a full buy, Secret fights the mains. Interesting. This is actually a pretty common strategy that teams like to do when coming up with game plans. For example, on Cloud9's most recent pro performance, they spammed B-Site, but they would only hit A when they had strong ults online. This was because their comp was built around abusing B-Site and its flaws. And I'm actually doing a video covering this later. And sure, sometimes they defaulted into mid or A to farm an orb, but this comp doesn't have much of a space maker. Getting out onto A-Site is going to be extremely difficult. By filling up this one choke point, Cloud9 wouldn't be able to come out without taking massive damage, which is why they only went A with ults. So by doing this strat, the defense were tricked into thinking that they weren't only going B, when in reality, they were going B all the time, and only going A under specific circumstances. This is exactly what Team Secret is doing here, and it's working great. Team Liquid haven't caught on, and you see that they're in position to do a dish, A main, site split. They have KO, Astro, and Race towards dish, and Breach and Cypher in A main. What they don't know is that they're about to run right into Team Secret's trap card. They sprint out of the gate, fling KO zero point, pull back Astro Star, and Chuck raises paint shells to push anyone on Dish off the angle. And to be fair, this is actually a pretty good adjustment, because they've seen Secret play here before, but not this time. There's no one there except for a well-hidden spy cam and a nasty setup. Watches, Tripwire will be destroyed by the paint oh, shells. Oh, this cam. And they are unaware of it, and he's paint just getting shell. so much info right now. Oh, oh my Jeremy. god! Yamp 
just gets taken out of the sky. Jesse Bash knows there's more now up there. Unhand flash gets checked on. Jesse Bash in their face and throws. And in the matter of 10 seconds, Liquid gets obliterated. Raze goes flying off dish and face plants on top site. Fate comes out of spawn and launches a flying prowler. And through all the rifle spam, Secret come out on top this round and absolutely embarrass Team Liquid. Bash in their face and thriving. Liquid just left in pieces. Liquid are forced to use their second timeout. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Yeppy went flying. He got launched like, ah! And they were like, pew, pew, pew. Get off our site, you stupid idiots. You're running into a trap. What are you doing? Boom. I really miss Sliggy. Liquid really need to bounce back this round or else they are going to go home. But Secret have them in the spin cycle. Liquid are set up in a bridge heavy default. KO and Cypher are going to take Arcade while Breach and Raze take Dish. Now this next decision is really confusing, but they decide to have Astra all by herself towards the south side of the map. Astra isn't going to take any map control on her own. She's just going to play back, chill out, gather some info, and then come in for the execute. But do you know what would be better than to have Astra do this? Using Cypher's spy cam. This ability isn't bound to him like Killjoy's turret or Chamber's trademark are. What a lot of teams do actually is place their Cypher utility in one side of the map to gather info while they work the other. These are fracture fundamentals, and you'll see why in just a second. Secret are set up with four people geared up to dominate B main. And guess what? They're doing this while Liquid is on a full buy. The trend continues. Secret plans on showing four people be main so that they run straight into Cypher's web of tripwires over on A. And with both Fade and Breach's ultimates, they feel comfortable stacking one half of the map and playing retake on the other. And Astra is in for one rough ride. B, you expect that with these pieces put into this puzzle, it would be a lot cleaner. Ooh, Jeremy! No! Got so good. Desperately oh, oh my god, did you see Astra? She went like, ba -boosh! Okay, I'm just kidding. But Team Liquid got punished. Hard. Without their controller, any sight hit is going to be hard, and this round might as well already be chalked up. The attackers in response dart up Arcade after gaining so much information from their Astra. But Team Secret are ready. They know Liquid is going to run up the opposite side of the map, so they turn around and unleash their ultimates. These completely stall the offense, and they don't know what to do next. Now, if they had a Cypher Cam here instead of their Astra, they would still have their smokes, but receive the same information. Well, you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet, right? Nats tries to pick up the pieces, but without smokes or cages, this round is just too far gone to recover. The score is 9-1, to one, and this is looking rough if you're a Liquid fan. They're back on another eco, and at this point in the video, you should know that because of this, Secret are fighting up north. This round, they have Fade, Brimstone, and Cypher fighting Arcade, and Breach and Raze fighting for A main. Liquid, in the meantime, are going fast. They have four players grouped up Arcade, and Nats is going to lurk up B main later in the execute. And I do have to give credit where credit is due. This hit does look pretty damn clean. Getting revenge after that 13-0 yes. map loss all the way back at Champs. That was their first opponent. They still managed to make it into the playoffs. They exited their group. And then were dealt with Ooh, by Ascend, who would then go on to become the champions. Yampi with another shout, trying to go for the rocket this time. Will find Borkum, but it's going to get flushed out of tower by the Orbital Strike. Yep. Despite getting scanned by the Haunt, Liquid is running it down. Breach Fault Lines Arcade to prevent people from pushing up. Raze releases her Roomba, KO lobs a flash over the top, and Astra pulls back a star and tower. Team Secret are forced back, and for the first time this game, Team Liquid look like they're in control. Raze lobs her paint shells to clear out tower, which is followed up by an Astra stun at the entrance to catch anyone running away. The defense becomes separated. In the chaos, Brimstone gets abandoned on site while his teammates run back to spawn to play off their trap wires. Yempi realizes that Brimstone is stranded. This is the timing to open up the round, to make a comeback. He pops his showstopper and obliterates Brimstone. And Fade must have felt bad that she just let her Brimstone die and swings out of the smoke. It's now a 5 versus 3, but Secret quickly even out the odds by trading out their Fade and lobbing Raze's paint shells onto the default plant spot. This happens all the time on Fracture and what makes these plants so dangerous. When you're going to plant on this map, it's sometimes good to tap the spike to try and bait out some of this utility. But Redgar had no choice here. The player advantage is evened at three apiece. Nats, who's been lurking up B main this entire time, finally jumps out and snags two important kills. Finally, Liquid take a round, and they'll need one more if they plan on playing around the 9-3 curse. Alright, this round is big. Despite it only being one round, coming back down from 10-2 compared to 9-3 feels massive. And Liquid need this round and a bit of help from the 9-3 curse. They start in a 2-3 spread on the south side of the map. Team Secret are played in a similar setup as to what we've seen before. Brim and Fade on B and the other three on A. They recognize that KO is two points away from his ultimate and are ready in case Liquid decides to go for it. And Breach is one off of his. By setting up like this, they think that Liquid is going to use all the utility grabbing the orbs to get KO's or Breach's ult online. 
they won't be able to hold sites against these. So they have no choice but to retake, play Cypher opposite of strips again, and hope Liquid use too much utility for the execute and not save enough to disrupt the retake. But with two strong ults basically online, this one will be hard to win. KO starts A and throws his knife line up. And what this is gonna do is land on top of A main and bait out some utility. Envy trades out the knife for his fault line and a utility battle for A main starts. Once it hits, Liquid responds with a boom bot and a fault line, and they pull back an Astro Smoke. But Team Liquid are stubborn, and don't want Liquid to grab this orb. They flash A main and regain this space. Liquid's three Musketeers have gained B main control and have wrapped underneath Arcade. Redgar calls his boys together, snag an orb for Breach, wait for the rechargeables, and they slam B. It's that Prowler from Deep CT, so this could be maybe waiting for the post plant. Yep, this Learning time. from that last round. Yeah, crucial here from Redgar. But, oh, do no. they read but at the very last second, he realizes that Team Secret isn't contesting any of this map control. They must be playing retake like they were before. So he decides to save his Rolling Thunder for the post plant and use minimal utility for the site take. This was a really good call. But Raze is flanking, and fast. She's satcheled over Liquid's tripwires, and they have no idea. Astro gets shot in the back of the head, and KO dies in the generator smoke. Now it's up to the three amigos in tower to close out the round versus the five defenders. Finding him! They're in agony right now, and yes, they can try and make a push of this. Borkum should be dead to right. Yampi has to come alive, finds two, needs more. A 3v3 now into the post plant. The time is ticking. That's a Jeremy back and forth. Tower is the last bastion of hope, and Yampi holds on for Liquid. This ult that Redgar saved was pivotal this round. He waited for the perfect time to rip it. He hears Secret running at them in tower, so he knows that this is the time to let it go. Nats waits for the defenders to run by him to pop out of the smoke, but he gets traded. Redgar and Yampi know they have to make a play during all the commotion and beautifully time a double swing to barely win the round with 16 HP. But despite finishing strong, Liquid are still down six rounds. And in the second half, this just proved to be too much to overcome. This series was a strong first showing for Team Secret, and they demonstrated just how you should be playing defense on Fracture. Textbook.